Buster, as he was called, loved his ministry to the Shaninka people of Peru. For he truly was the good shepherd to thousands of natives. To the people of Brazil, David was a man of the Beatitudes, a man poor in spirit, meek, pure of heart, merciful, a promoter of peace and love. Our brother Christian was blind for the last decade of his life, but he never felt sorry for himself. Each day of darkness, he still found ways to read by way of recorded books. He came to the table each day full of stories and new ideas, he teaches us still to stay aware and awake, to be open to new ideas each day, to see the light through the shadows. Wonderful thing about Rod Petrie is that when he saw a need uh, among the, the poor, he didn't uh, wait uh, to get a detailed plan of how it was all going to be worked out. He just uh, jumped into it and plunged it. He, he would just start something and expect the, the Lord and the people of God to provide all the necessary resources. A perfect example of this in Rod's life was the beautiful example of he and Evan Murphy of the Inn in Philadelphia. Mike dedicated his life to the ministry of the poor in Puerto Rico, and in every place he was stationed, he was always, always available to his Spanish sisters and brothers. One of the most beloved friars at 31st Street who would do anything when asked, a confessor who ministered to the depressed and scrupulous with the patience of a saint. Aubrey McNeil lived his life as a true Franciscan friar, giving unselfishly to the community which he served, as well as those individuals that were a part of his life. One day I remember him saying to me, you know, as much as I travel, I always feel so grateful to come back home and know that the brothers are here. And when he said that, uh, Rafe touched my heart because he, he always had the friars uh, to return to. He regarded his community as a home. And uh, no matter where he went throughout the world, uh, he would experience that homeness uh, with, with all of us. This is always the answer that Bill would give to this statement. Now, Bill, behave yourself. And Bill would say, I'll try, but it won't be easy. Our brother Clem Consby had served as a military chaplain. When he finished his tour of duty, he volunteered to serve in our Bolivian missions. His ministry was parish work and also teaching in the minor seminary. Gary was an unusual man in several ways. He was not locked into the main line of engineering at MIT. Rather, he was in an experimental studies cohort and was very involved in a dramatic group. He clearly desired to move beyond the ordinary, the unusual, and the humdrum. Our brother Lenny Lenzewick was involved in several ministries. The one he most enjoyed was when he was a chaplain on cruise liners trips. Uh, he had a, a opportunity, he said, that he met many people on the tour and shared many of his trip experiences. My most favorite quote about Bill Scully is when you called him up and asked him, Hey Bill, how are you? He always responded, Well, I almost died last night. Father Jeremiah McGinley, also known as Moose McGinley, was a wonderful preacher. Moose and I became a supporter for each other. I'm still missing Moose, but he lives in my heart. My dear friend, wherever you are, hopefully in heaven, I wish you well. I miss you, and knowing you, you're giving an opinion to the Lord on how to run the world. Pete Fitzpatrick was a no-nonsense traditional Catholic. He subscribed to Church Militant, and it irked him to no end that Dorothy Day was a candidate for canonization. 
On the other hand, Bede was a man of deep commitment who gave himself totally to the people of Japan and, as a man of deep prayer, spent hours in contemplation. On the buffet line in the seminary dining room and gazing at the Brussels sprouts, Bonaventure would say, that's too healthy for me. I'll take two pieces of lemon meringue pie, please. If one dessert is good for you, two must be better. I would visit Myron uh, on the last few years of his life. I always bring him two danishes, one cherry and one cheese. And when his, his eyes would light up, he was so thrilled with it. He was a man who had who loved simple joys and, and was so happy to bring it to him. The tireless worker said this on his 100th birthday 75 years ago, when I dedicated my life to my blessed Lord to do with me what he wanted. I am sure his merciful providence has led me by the hand. He has often reminded me that he told the apostle, you did not choose me, I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, the kind that endures. Emmerich's ministry will endure with the thousands that he ministered to. Alexander, my brother, made many contributions to the church and to the fraternity, but one of his greatest contributions was making the Bible more accessible to the general reading public. He was a great professor who loved the Word of God. Father Reginald was a gentlemanly a priest and a priestly gentleman. He never said no to any request, and he was a person that people liked to talk to. Jim's passion for higher education and athletics was at the core of his life as a friar. The impact he had on St. Bonaventure University, Quincy University, and Siena College is his legacy. Eddie forged his own way. He fashioned before our very eyes a new definition of what it means to be a religious brother. And in doing so, in my opinion, he called our province to lay aside so many of our clerical ways and learn to be brothers to one another. May he rest in peace. A friar with great gifts. In the classroom, on his many cruises, at the card table, or just sitting around conversing with the friars. Blaze loved his Franciscan life, Siena College, the students, and of course, his brother Friars. He was a friar through and through, a man with a heart of gold. To Phil, fraternal life was most important. He had a wonderful sense of humor and repartee, and would love to have conversations on a wide variety of topics. He was a loving teacher and a very, very fine homilist and was part of the Ministry of the Word for many years. Phil loved life and truly lived it to the fullest. Very enthusiastic, happy-go-lucky friar uh, who used his many talents uh, not only to enhance our community life but also uh, the ministry to the people in Brazil. Uh, he had endeared himself to so many people down there and I'm sure they mourn his loss uh, as much as we do. Our brother St. Francis once said, and the Lord gave me brothers. Undoubtedly, no two of us are alike. Passing of our brother Gerard Lee testifies to this truth. A truly simple, pure of heart individual, very kind and a sensitive fire. He clearly was a person who you could say of, there was no guile in him. Romuald Chinetsky, the consummate gentleman whose easy demeanor put everyone at ease, mastered the art of anticipating the needs of his brothers. He was a friar who always saw something valuable in his brothers, as well as in all the stuff he salvaged and brought to his room. This was not only merchandise, 
for lives he saved. Like any of us, he could be a bit difficult, a bit distant, even a bit critical. But Alan was never mean-spirited. He never tore people down. For those with eyes to see, he was sometimes a baffling beatitude. The Bill I remember always had such a deep passion for life. His faith was deeply rooted, but he was always reaching for the stars. Whether it was starting a bakery ministry at 80 or setting up a homily blog on YouTube, his excitement on trying something new was always contagious. For Marty, life was always wonderful. He never complained. He was always positive, whether it was about the food he ate or the pain he lived with. No amount of suffering ever diminished his love of life. One of my happy memories of Gerald was a windjammer cruise on Lake Champlain. Completely out of his element, the city boy had no choice but to enjoy himself, and he did. John and Murray was a man who truly loved God, who traveled the world bringing God to others. May God give him eternal rest. We've said goodbye to a great friar, one who served as a theologian to a Brazilian bishop at Second Vatican Council, one who was elected our own minister of Evangelium, but again whose health made it impossible for him to continue, one who stood up to a Vatican official who tried to interfere in a general chapter of the order, one who through a remarkable and long life kept a Franciscan personality, serene, understated, humble, retiring. Well done, dear Brother Charles. Knowing Chris Posh is like knowing a living celebration. He was happy and joyful all the time. There was never an occasion where you weren't happy to know that you were going to meet him. Oh.